It's the special edition of Business Incorporated. Thank you for joining us. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwagu. Well, today is the second day of the Monetary Policy Committee meeting of the Nigerian Central Bank, the last one for the year. And for these past two days, the committee has been reviewing, amongst other things, the current state of the global economy, as well as changes in key macroeconomic indicators in the local economy in order to determine policy direction for key monetary variables in the near term. Now, in about half an hour from now, the Central Bank Governor Godwin and Mefiele will be announcing the key decisions. And of course, we will be joining them live at the CBN headquarters in Abuja. And um, here in Lagos studio, we have our panel of discussants to look at the key decisions. But first, let me talk to my colleague in Frankfurt, Conrad Busen, to bring us up to speed with the news driving the European markets this Tuesday. Good afternoon, Conrad. Thank you very much. It's a big day here in Nigeria. You can see waiting for the CBN announcement. But tell me, it's another blow for Germany after the failed government coalition talks in Berlin. Now, Frankfurt got the bad news that the European Banking Authority will not go to Frankfurt, but to Paris. How big is the disappointment? Oh yeah, it's a really a big blow for people here in Frankfurt who worked on the application to get the um, banking authority of, of the European Union here in Frankfurt. You know, it has to move away from London because of Brexit and the decision now was that the EBA, the European Banking Authority, will be situated in Paris and not in Frankfurt. People here are disappointed but if you talk to insiders here, of course, they understand that this is a European affair and in Europe uh, all political decisions have been very well balanced between the different nations involved and you know we have the European Central Bank here in Frankfurt which large supervising powers over large parts of the banking sector and we have EIOPA here in Frankfurt which is the European supervisor for the insurance sector and pension funds so from outside Germany it might have looked as too much a concentration of power if the European Banking Authority really had been uh, uh, seated here in Frankfurt as well. Paris now is, from a Frankfurt point of view, the second best choice. It's much better than Dublin. The Irish capital also was in the race. But you know, uh, Paris is not really far away from Frankfurt. It's only a four hour drive uh, ride on a high speed train. And believe me, uh, the people working for this European Banking Authority in the future in Paris will have to take this train to come to Frankfurt very often because they will have to closely cooperate with the biggest and most important player in the European financial sector. And that is the European Central Bank, which is based here in Frankfurt. Well, I can see that that disappointment is not um, so much. Uh, looking behind you there, we can see that the DAX is really trending high there. But let's look at the other side of the Atlantic. U.S. President Donald Trump's Department of Justice has moved to block the merger of Media House, Time Warner, and AT&T, the world's largest telecommunications company. Is this power play motivated by politics? That's how many pundits uh, are looking at this, of course, given that Donald Trump so often criticized CNN for, you know, distributing face, fake news. Uh, CNN is part of the Time Warner group. Um, of course, I have to tell you, uh, the opinion of the U.S. president is not really shared by most Europeans. Uh, CNN has a reputation of being a very well-done outlet of news uh, by most Europeans. But... In this case, uh, many people here believe that the Department of Justice does have a case. If AT&T and Time Warner were allowed to merge, they would have what uh, experts call must-have content with CNN and with other um, um, you know, content providers. They would have content that would allow the new big company to you know, force their competitors to pay higher prices for this content. And that means higher prices eventually for the customers. And that's why it's good that the Department of Justice is, a take, is taking a close look at this. Now let's look at the currency. Uh, the currency markets, the Turkish lira. That's on focus. 
its price has plunged to a record low. What's behind that? Well, uh, several factors. The most important one is that the Turkish president, uh, Erdogan, repeatedly has criticized the central bank for its monetary policies. So that now many people on the markets are concerned that the independence of the Turkish central bank is at risk and that is... Uh, you know, not good. It would mean that uh, the currency would be um, uh, uh, determined by government policies in Turkey rather than market forces, something that the markets don't like. And that's why they are selling the Turkish lira today. Thank you very much uh, for your time, um, Conrad. Well, as I told you earlier, while we started this program, is a big day today. And we talked about it yesterday. It's a decision day for the rate, and the CBN will soon be announcing their decision. So I hope to see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. And so, while we wait for the announcement of the rate decisions, you would recall that the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank at its last meeting in September retained the benchmark interest rate at 14%. Now, according to the CBN Governor Godwin Emefiele, this is to enable the committee achieve more clarity in the evolution of key macroeconomic indicators. According to the Central Bank Governor, the indicators that influenced the decision include budget implementation, economic recovery, exchange rate inf inflation, and um, employment generation. As such, the MPC voted to retain the monetary policy rate at 14%, the cash reserve ratio at 22.5%, the liquidity ratio at 30%, while retaining the asymmetric corridor at plus 200 and minus 500 basis points around the MPR. And uh, just um, yesterday, the National Bureau of Statistics released the GDP numbers, which indicated a growth rate of 1.4% in the third quarter of the year. October inflation number came in at 15.91%, down from 15.98% in November.